Hello, welcome back to the Spectrosonics Omnisphere tutorial. Today we're talking about the FX units and how they all hang together and we access them from the FX button. And what we're looking at here is a rack. That's four effect slots and they can contain any effect of our choosing. So if I drop this little arrow button down here, I get a menu where I get to choose which type of effect I want to apply. Let's choose a chorus. We've now plugged a chorus in. The return of the sawtooth. And this chorus has been mapped to layer A of part one. And that's it. It's the only sound that's going to have this chorus applied to it. If we um, put a different sound, let's have a triangle on layer B. There's no chorus there because layer B has no effect in its rack. So each one of the layers in each one of the parts has its own completely dedicated four slot rack. Get back over to layer A and there's our chorus back again. Now, I don't propose in this video to talk about any individual effects unit at all. There are 58 of them, way too many settings to cover effectively and part of the joy of Omnisphere is discovering all of this stuff for yourself. What we're talking about here is the management of them, how to plug them all together. So we can have, let's say, you've got a, an EQ system here as well. Okay, so here's our thin reedy kind of thing going on. So that's all layer A, and that's fine. Now let's say that we do actually want to apply this chorus setting here to every layer in the patch. So our triangle wave that we configured in layer B earlier, we want to route it to this um, same analog chorus system. Well, there's multiple different ways that we can accomplish that, but a nice easy one is to go to this little drop down button over on the left hand side and say copy effects preset. And then instead of putting it on a dedicated rack for just layer A, we're going to use this common rack instead. I'm going to paste it in here. And now having put it there, we don't need it on layer A's rack at all. And so now we've still got the chorus effect. There it is. But we've also got the same sound on layer B, our triangle. Bring both of those layers in together. So that's what the common rack is all about. Another four slots, every single layer always goes through the common rack, hence its name. Rather than putting it there, however, let's copy it, get rid of that. We could have put it on an auxiliary bus instead. And now what this means is that no signal is gonna intrinsically get rooted to this chorus. We have to tell each of the individual layers to send some signal to the auxiliary bus. And the way that we do that is from our individual layer controls. So here we are in layer A. So this is the effects rack for layer A. And over on the right hand side, we have an auxiliary send. We can control by, by default, it's um, a pre-fader send, which means the entire signal is gonna get sent to the auxiliary bus, but we could make it a post-fader send, in which case any layer controls that we have inside layer A are gonna have an over a master effect on how much signal gets sent out. That's pretty standard routing stuff. So if we leave it on pre and crank our auxiliary send all the way to maximum, now layer A, in addition to doing its own thing, the signal is still going through this EQ unit and it's still going through the common rack. Everything else is still happening. But in addition to all that, it's also being routed to the auxiliary bus. And that's where our chorus lives.
And there's our chorus sound. Now, having kind of whizzed through each of those options, let's have our first attempt at trying to make sense of this. It is daunting, you know, I accept. But if we kind of pick at it bit by bit, it's really not complicated. It just appears to be. So what we've got is we've got really two separate sections. This is where we're looking at each one of those individual parts. And you can see part times eight. So this that we're looking at at the moment, we're currently dealing with layer A. And here's the effects rack for layer A. So that little section there is this effects rack. That's where we're going through the EQ. And here we have our pre or post fader routing to the auxiliary bus. That's where our chorus lives here. And we also have a direct hardwired permanent connection to the common FX rack. And that's thing, this thing over here. So if we stick an effect on there as well, let's have some distortion. Killed the sawtooth, awesome. So now we've got three different racks. All of them are in operation. Two of them are hardwired and permanent. The auxiliary rack is optional. So the send from each of the layers, see we have individual auxiliary send controls for each of the layers. This determines how much signal gets sent out of this rack into the auxiliary bus. And then the auxiliary bus has one master return slider, which is where we control the amount of input signal that we permit from the outside world, which in our case is four independent layer racks. So that's six times four, 24 individual effects units that you can potentially plug into a single part. Obviously, if you've only got one layer active, then it's gonna be four plus four plus four for a total of 12 presets that you can have. Now, speaking of presets, we've got loads of options available to us. So every single effects unit has some default values, some default presets given to you. So if I choose a different chorus unit, or let's have a phaser, yeah, we'll choose this phaser. Now our preset list is different. So every effects unit has got a unique and independent list of presets, stock presets. And if we make changes to these values, then we have the option to save our effects preset. So this is a phaser demo. Here's the phaser demo, but if I change to a, it was a terribly named preset because I can switch to a different type of phaser and we don't see that phaser demo option. So every list is unique. Head back to our original phaser and it reappears. In addition to effects units having presets, we also have rack presets. So this is collections of up to four, not necessarily exactly four, up to four different presets that have been collected together to give you, in this case, a pretty violent sound. Any individual effects unit can be turned off just by clicking the light button over there. And the entire effects unit, the whole thing can be disabled by clicking the little blue light and it turns red. Now you can see we've got this mesh over the top of all the controls. So there are no effects in use on this, on this patch at the moment. So that's the routing options for each individual patch. And then you can see two output streams flowing into the bottom part. This is where we deal with multis. So let's have a look at the multi options. So click our multi button and then go into the effects page and we see exactly the same thing. It's a completely common approach. So when you get the when you get the handle of dealing with racks, the fact that they're all over the place and there's <laughs> seemingly millions of them, there's nothing inherently complex with this thing. So we've got all the same options for selecting our rack presets or our individual effects presets. But now we've got different options up at the top. So at the multi-level, we have four auxiliary racks, each capable of handling four effects as well. And whatever we plug in here will or won't be heard according to 
how much send is assigned to them in the mixer. So at the moment, here we are looking at patch one, all the auxiliary sends are disabled. So we're not sending any information to any of those buses. I crank auxiliary one up. Now these effects units are receiving signal. So if I just disable all that again, so the only effects we can possibly hear now are at the multi-level and we've got a reverb unit and a phaser there they are okay turn the auxiliary send down that disappears then finally at the very end of the chain we have a master rack and as you can see it's permanently rooted but it's only actually fed by output a so all of this effects uh, all of these effects systems flow into output A and then through the master FX rack. So anything that you put in here is always going to get used, whereas the auxiliary sends aren't inherently connected to the mixer. The mixer goes directly to output A and also through the sends. There are some kind of basic principles about the kinds of um, FX units that should be on the insert channels. These are all insert channels because the signal flows through them rather than an auxiliary channel, where in addition to a dry signal getting to the outside world, a second signal is sent into the auxiliary send. And that's why it's called an auxiliary bus. It's a completely independent second route through which the signal can flow. Now, signal processing, you know, and, and the principles about, do you have compressors and EQs and those kinds of effects on the inserts, and reverbs and modulations and delays, on the on the sends yes that's a general principle but don't be you know feel don't feel as if you're constrained to you know you must always have a delay on an auxiliary sends the, there are very few you know absolute rules here anyway that's the effects unit dealt with hope you enjoyed the video if you did please consider subscribing hit notifications i'll see you for the next one thanks a lot